Hello, and welcome to The Body VR, an immersive tour through the human body. Please keep your hands and feet inside the platform at all times. Resetting orientation in three, two, one. Let's make our way to the main observatory. Keep in mind you can turn your head in any direction. Our journey begins here, inside a blood vessel carrying blood from the heart. The heart beats at an average of 80 beats per minute for a total of over 100,000 beats in a single day. Let's take a closer look. Prepare yourself for decompression. You're all set. Enjoy the tour. We are currently inside an arterial, a small strand in a network of blood vessels that spread throughout the body. Let's take a look at the blood's most prominent cell, the red blood cell. Red blood cells, or erythrocytes, take up almost half of the blood's total volume, giving a red colour to our blood. Their main function is to transfer oxygen from our lungs to vital parts of our body. Next up are white blood cells, or leukocytes which take up less than 1% of the blood's total volume. Their main function is to protect our body from infection. Lastly, let's examine platelets, or thrombocytes, whose main function is to stop bleeding at the site of a damaged blood vessel. Let's investigate. A type of leukocyte, the monocytes, creep through blood vessels to become macrophages and search for foreign invaders, which they eat and digest. Let's leave the bloodstream through the tear to find a macrophage. Prepare yourself for miniaturization. We are currently on the outside of the macrophage, within an infected tissue, looking at its surface. A typical cell membrane structure. There are thousands of receptor proteins on the surface of the cell. Some of these proteins are tasked with transferring information, and others with transferring cargo. Water and oxygen pass freely through the cell's membrane. Larger molecules, like glucose, enter through small pumps or channels. Large objects, like viruses, require recognition or keys to gain access, thus preventing unauthorized entrance. Fortunately, I have a counterfeit key that's identical to a real one. We are now entering the cell.
a macrophage has pulled us in, and we are submerged in the cytoplasm, a gel made mostly of water. The cytoskeleton is made up of a network of adjustable strands that gives the cell its structure. There are three different types of strands that make up the cytoskeleton. Microfilaments are the thinnest strand, measuring only 7 nanometers in diameter. Intermediate filaments are made of the protein actin and have a diameter of 10 nanometers. Lastly, microtubules have a diameter of 24 nanometers, which is wide enough to be used for transport. A special type of protein, called Kinzin motor protein, has the ability to walk along microtubules. It latches onto larger structures and transports them around the cell. Energy is available in the cytoplasm in the form of ATP molecules. ATP binds with kinesin and propels it forward. With each step the kinesin takes, it binds with an ATP molecule and releases an ADP molecule. In real time, kinesin walks up to 100 steps per second. The kinesin protein is heading straight for the cell's nucleus. Let's tag along for a ride. We are now approaching the nucleus, the center of the cell. The surface of the nucleus has its own membrane, similar to that of the cell. Pores are spread around the surface of the nucleus to allow entry and exit of larger molecules. Protein filaments are located around the edge to facilitate the transport. Let's head inside. Here we are inside the nucleus, the control center of the cell, containing the majority of the cell's DNA. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is a molecule that carries our genetic code. The DNA contains instructions for protein synthesis. In the process of transcription, a segment of DNA is copied into RNA or ribonucleic acid, containing a single recipe for protein creation. Let's exit the nucleus through a nuclear pore. We have exited the nucleus and are now floating through the cytoplasm. 
Surrounding the nucleus is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or RER, a maze-like structure made of flattened membrane. Studied with ribosomes, the RER maintains a vital role in protein synthesis. Ribosomes link together amino acids following the instructions received from the RNA. The created protein is fed from the ribosome into the RER, which then folds the protein into a specific shape. The protein is then transported in a vesicle made from a portion of the RER's membrane. In the distance, you can see a mitochondria. Mitochondria are free-floating organelles, typically referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. Mitochondria received its name due to their vital role in ATP generation. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is the main source of energy within the cell. Mitochondria take the pyruvate and convert it into carbon dioxide and water, releasing ATP in the process. This energy is used in many cellular processes, such as biosynthetic reactions, motility, and cell division. Now that we have seen the major components of the cell, let's make our way outside. What is that? There's an incoming virus attack headed for the cell. Fortunately, a cloud of antibodies is stationed around the cell to protect it from viruses. The white blood cells consume the viruses as they are highlighted by the antibodies. Together, the antibodies and white blood cells form the front line of our immune system. Thousands of viruses have made it past the antibodies. Viruses overcome the defenses, and some viruses are able to enter the cell using counterfeit keys. There are too many viruses. It looks like the cell is not going to survive. Let's head back to the observatory. completes our journey through the human body. We hope you enjoyed the tour.